Welcome to a lesson on the parametric representation of a solution set for a linear equation. We should already be familiar with linear equations in the form of, let's say, y equals two-thirds x minus two, which is a slope-intercept form of a line, as well as two x plus three y equals twelve, which is a standard form of a linear equation. But to define a linear equation more formally, a linear equation with n unknowns, x sub one, x sub two, all the way through x sub n, is an equation that can be put in standard form or this form here. Where x sub one, x sub two, all the way through x sub n, n, b are real numbers, the a's are called the coefficients, and b is called the constant term. Notice the a's are being multiplied by the unknowns, and b is the number without the variable. A solution to a linear equation is a set of all real numbers, c sub one, c sub two, and so on, such that x sub one equals c sub one, x sub two equals c sub two, x sub three equals c sub three, and so on, satisfy the given linear equation. The set of all solutions is called the solution set, and to describe a solution set for a linear equation, parametric equations are often used. A parametric equation is a way of defining a relation using parameters or other variables. And then finally, a linear equation with n variables has n minus one free variables, or variables that can take on any real value, which will assign the parameters or their variables to. Let's take a look at an example. We want to solve the linear equation and use a parametric representation for the solution. We have two times x sub one minus four times x sub two equals twelve. So the first step is to solve this for x sub one or x sub two. Let's go ahead and solve this for x sub one. So our first step is to add four times x sub two to both sides of the equation. That would give us two times x sub one equals twelve plus four times x sub two. Now let's go ahead and divide everything by two. So now we have x sub one equals six plus two times x sub two. Because we have two unknowns and one equation, we have one free variable. So we should recognize that we are going to have an infinite number of solutions. And because of this, we'll introduce a third variable or a parameter which we'll assign to our free variable. Let's let x sub two be our free variable. Let's also let t be any real number. And since we're letting x sub two be our free variable, to represent our solution parametrically, we're going to let x sub two equal t, which means x sub one would have to be six plus two times t, replacing x sub two with t. So this is one way to represent the solution to our linear equation parametrically. And I say one way because the parametric representation of a solution is not unique. So just to illustrate this, let's say we let x sub one be our free variable. And again, we let t be any real number. But in this case, to form our parametric representation, let's let x sub one equal t. And therefore, using this equation here, the second equation would be t equals six plus two times x sub two. And now we'd have to solve this equation for x sub two. Let's go ahead and do that. We'd subtract six on both sides. That would give us t minus six equals two times x sub two. Divide everything by two. We'd have one half t minus three equals x sub two. So we could represent the same solution parametrically as x sub one equals t and x sub two equals one half t minus three. These are two different ways to represent the solution parametrically. Often in algebra class, we are asked to graph our linear equations, and we could do the same here using the parametric equations rather than the original equation. Let's go ahead and do that using the solution expressed using these equations here. So we'd make a column for t, which can take on the value of any real number, 
then we have x sub one, and then we have x sub two. Well, the first thing we should recognize is that whatever t value we select, it's also going to be the value of x sub two. And then since we know that x sub one equals six plus two times t, we can substitute the same values for t to get the values for x sub one. Every x sub one and x sub two forms an ordered pair, which represents one possible solution, which we can graph on the coordinate plane. Again, thinking of the x-axis as the x sub one axis, and thinking of the y-axis as the x sub two axis. If we plot these five points, we can sketch our line, which is another way to represent a solution to a linear equation with two unknowns. Let's take a look at a second example. Notice here we have one equation with three unknowns, and three minus one is equal to two, so here we'll have two free variables which means we'll introduce two parameters or two new variables to represent the solution parametrically. Looks like it's going to be easiest to solve this for x, so we would add two y to both sides as well as subtract three z. So we would have x equals six and then plus two y minus three z. So in this case, let's let y and z be our free variables. So we'll introduce two parameters or two new variables. Let's let s be any real number and t be any real number. So we'll go ahead and let y equal s and z equal t, which means x is going to be equal to, using this equation here, we would have six plus two times y, but y is s, so plus two s minus three times z, but z is t. So this would be the parametric representation of the solution to our linear equation. And because we have one equation with three unknowns, the graph of this would be three-dimensional or would be a plane in space. Let's go and show how we would do this using the parametric equations. Again, we start with a column for s and a column for t which we'd let be any real numbers that would be convenient to perform the calculations. And since s equals y, this column and this column are the same. And since z equals t, this column and this column are the same. And then we're left with finding x by performing substitution for s and t, which has been done here. Notice here each solution consists of a value for x, y, and z, so we have ordered triples, which would be points in space, which as we see here would be a plane graft in space. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.